Well, the big day is finally here. We've got it all buffed, looking nice and shiny, and uh, it's time to put the strings on the guitar. I'm initially going to put on the strings and not bother with the pickups because I want to make sure I've got the pickups aligned properly over the, the first and the seventh string. So I'll just put the strings on and worry about the pickups later. I've made a new bridge. Um, Steve, Steve Herberman had sent me this saddle or sent the bridge base but the saddle that came with it wasn't tall enough so I made a new one and that is set to go and then I've got this this uh, Gretsch tail piece that Steve got from an old friend of mine, Kirk Sand, at Laguna Guitars. And apparently this actually belonged to George Van Epps at one point. I, I think what Steve told me was that when George died, his daughter uh, gave or sold or something a bunch of George's stuff to Kirk Sand. And so that's kind of a cool connection to the original namesake of the guitar. So I'll get this mounted and then uh, put the strings on. So there's the tail piece. And now at this end I'm going to put in the I suppose original brass nut that fits right in here. So that'll sit like that. It doesn't... I'm really not sure if it ever had glue on it. Can't imagine it not having glue. So I'm going to put a few drips of glue in there and then it has to be tapped into place. It's, it's a very tight fit. Here's a surprise. I went to start stringing up the guitar with this heavy gauge seventh string and it comes all the way through the tailpiece because the tailpiece has been drilled out. I, I recall that George used an extra huge bass string so he undoubtedly drilled this out so that his his bass string would fit through the the factory made hole but uh, it's so big that the standard ball end on the guitar string doesn't work. So I've got some bass strings here which have a much bigger ball end. So what I'm going to do is nip this ball off the bass string and just pass it through the guitar string and that will definitely stop in the hole. We made wooden pickup rings out of ebony for the, the two pickups. This pickup is a Kent Armstrong PAF and uh, that's going to be in the neck position. And this is a Fralin pickup that uh, the owner of the guitar, Steve Herberman, has owned for quite some time. This will be our bridge pickup. Um, because you can't really wrench down on ebony without fears of cracking, I, uh, I, I'm a little concerned that there might be some vibration between the, the bottom of the pickup ring and the soundboard. So I've got this 3 millimeter thick foam 
or was it two millimeters? Three millimeters. Three millimeters, okay. And I'm going to make a pad to go underneath the pickup ring. I've already done it for this one, and uh, that'll just act as a little cushion, and then I don't have to worry too much about vibrations. Cut out the middle, drill the matching holes. So I was a little surprised to discover that the hole had been drilled out so large that the base string that we were going to use passed right through it and came out the other side. So I found a, a ball end from an actual electric base string set and I threaded that onto the, the seventh string for this guitar and that worked just fine but it looked pretty ugly so what Jeff did here you can only see the end result he took that ball end from the bass string set and and uh, filed a taper to it so it, it has a wedge shape and he was able to wedge it into the, the saddle here. So now the bass string, the seventh string, will go in, but it's not going to have the ball end hanging way out. So it'll look very nice. So thanks a lot, Jeff. Those are pretty. I can't believe this is finally almost done. <laughs> I mean, it's been since, I think, July or August. Long time. Yeah. A very interesting project. Yeah, I'm good with that. And easy to get at. Mm-hmm. Let's see if we can get the arrows aligned. Okay, now go. <laughs> Hello. So this is my friend Aaron Kalanicki. He's also a neighbor and an electronics wizard. Um, he, for fun, I think, rebuilds Hammond B3 organs and, and builds replicas of, of classic amplifiers and stereo equipment and stuff. And I, on the other hand, have to see a wiring diagram just to put a volume pot on a guitar. So, Aaron very graciously offered to wire this guitar up. So, what have we got here? So, we've got two humbuckers, uh, pretty traditional layout, um, with the traditional Gretsch volume and tone arrangement, volume up on the horn with a neck tone and a bridge tone, and then the three-way switch. And uh, we talked to that. In the original configuration, this switch was a kill switch. Yeah, that's you know, what I so you'd flip it and it would kill the guitar. Um, but rather than that, we opted to put since this pickup was um, it had a four conductor wiring, we wound up with, with a, uh, a coil tap and a series parallel uh, switch. So in the up position, it's traditional humbucking. In the middle position, it's a uh, coil tap with only this um, this coil. And then in the down position, it's uh, both coils. Um, it's either series or parallel. I get these yeah. wrong. I can never remember which what it is. And frankly, it basically sounds a lot like a single coil, but without the hum. So that or without mm -hmm. yeah, without the sixty cycle hum. So that's kind of cool. Um, I kind of like it in the humbucking position just for a little fuller sound. But of course, it's up to well, whoever, sure. you know. Any particular challenges with this? Um. Not more than uh, any other um, semi-hollow or hollow body, just having to feed everything through the F-hole and that mm -hmm. sort of a stuff, which is always a challenge. But really, um, it wasn't anything overly difficult. Um, one of the pickups, uh, magnets were out of phase from each other, so when I wired it up and I put it in the middle position and got that sort of real nasally uh, out of phase sound, so I had to flip a magnet here, and that solved that. So... Uh, it's yeah, it's pretty good. 
It sounds good too. You want to hear it? Yeah, Shall please. All right. What's the Let's amp see. of choice This today? is an old AC30, an old Vox, uh, very clean. Uh, with those, of course, pesky tubes that have to warm up. I remember television sets like that. Yep, and I'm just running a little reverb and a little delay just to fill it out a little bit. So as you know, I'm not much of a jazz player, but so that's the uh, excuse me, the neck humbucker. And then that split. It's quite wow, a bit thinner. Very thin. Yep. And then that's parallel or series, whichever one of the two it is. And you can tell it's, it sounds exact, pretty much exactly the same as the split position without the, the buzz. And then in the full humbucker you get. And then the bridge position is quite a bit bigger, fuller and thinner. Uh, uh, brighter, I should say. seventh string I just don't know how to really use it <laughs> I find them so confusing yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's enough for me to play a six string <laughs> and the you know confusing nature of a seven and then in the, the two positions uh, the middle I guess is kind of cool too you started with I think it's a pretty crazy cool. project ah uh, yes I, I, <laughs> I can imagine so that's it I think it came out fantastic well, it really sounds good and uh, thank you so think, much uh, for doing all that you did with it oh it's it was, it was quite fun especially to be a part of this you know project with you know everything you've described to me in the videos that I've watched it's cool to see the, the final the final um, final uh what do you call it the final product yeah the the person who now owns it steve herberman um he's actually never seen this guitar at all yeah only pictures because really? wow. he got it from someone in florida who sent it directly, directly. to wow. me okay so i'm going to the artisan guitar show in harrisburg in a couple weeks steve's going to be there and he'll get the guitar then so I'm hoping it's, to. <laughs> yeah, he'll uh, he'll certainly appreciate it. I mean, I mean it, it. You would. I mean, looking through it. I mean, you've described pretty much every place that you had to restore, but <laughs> you'd need some pretty good eyes to hunt down the kind of uh, uh, dam uh, damage or condition, I guess you'd say, the guitar was in when you started. So it's quite exceptional. Well, thank you.